So uh, inside of bids, just jumping into this package, you see I have these two different data flows here. We're going to take a look at fast parse first off. Now with fast parse, uh, I have them both in these, these uh, data flow tasks. And in this first data flow task, actually in both of them, all I have is a flat file source just pulling out uh, about a million rows. Uh, I'm just dumping it into a row count variable for right now, just as a trash destination. So in one of these, I have fast parse turned off, which is the default setting for your flat file source. And the other one, I have it turned on. Now, to find the fast parse option, because it's not incredibly obvious here, uh, to find it, you have to right click on the source and go into the advanced editor. And it's the same thing for the data conversion task. You have to go into the advanced editor. So from the advanced editor, if you go over to the input and output properties, this is where you're going to find it. And here you'll have the flat file source output and the source error output. So basically your green line and your red line. So under the source output, under the output columns, you'll have a whole list of all the columns here. And as you go through these, you'll notice over here under the, the properties of the column itself, right here we have fast parse. And by default, that is set to false. So this source here is just configured as the default. Everything is set to false. On the other hand, this other data flow that I have over here with fast parse turned on on the flat file source, you go into that advanced editor. And here you'll see that for each one of these, I have that, that value set to true. Now, fast parse is a great tool to use, but one of the annoyances, I guess you could say, is that it's a column by column setting. So if you wanted to use it for every column coming out of that file, you have to go to each individual column and set that drop down to true. So if you're only working with 10 or 15 columns, okay, not bad, but if you have a very, you know, very wide data set that you're working with and maybe you have 20 to 50 columns, you know, you're, you're not, it can get uh, very monotonous very fast. So Again, it's one of those things that's great to use, but that is one small inconvenience there. So with uh, fast parse turned on, again, what it's doing is it's skipping over that validation. It's taking that data and it's giving it to SSIS and saying, here, take the data, just trust me, everything's cool, and just load it. So if your data is formatted correctly, all the data types match, you don't have any problems with, uh, with length, you know, the, the column widths, then everything's going to be fine. It's going to load very fast. Uh, however, if you haven't checked this data and maybe there is a problem, of course, the package is going to start executing. It's going to start loading data. But as soon as it hits a bad row, it's going to fail. So that could be an issue. You'll end up having to roll back the, uh, any kind of inserts that took place and try and find the problem and, and do it again. Um, so it's one of those things you want to be careful with. So I'm going to do a quick time trial here. And I'm going to execute both of these tasks to see what the time difference is. Um, also, as a disclaimer, I do like to, uh, to give every time I do a time trial. When I first started this, I had a, a pretty decent machine. Uh, when I started doing these, uh, these performance tuning time trials. Uh, right now, though, I'm currently on a machine with a Core i7 with hyper-threading and 10 gigs of RAM. So execution times may not be very fast, or may not be very long at all. So we'll see how much, much time we can actually save in these examples. So first off, we have fast parse turned off. This is the default setting. If I just execute the task itself, you can see it's moving those rows. Everything's good. It's pretty quick, not too bad. If I check out the progress tab, looks like that only took us 3.1. So about 3.2 seconds almost. So let's see how much time we can save with fast parse turned on. So if I execute this, execute that task, you can see already it, it runs much faster. And the progress on this one, we were able to take it down to 1.2, or roughly 1.3. So we did actually get to quite, quite a gain in performance, if you're just looking at you know, cutting the number down as much as possible. So that's only from using, or just from using fast parse. So that's, that's not bad at all. So let me stop debugging.
Now, I also wanted to show you the ODB source. You know, when you're using your ODB source, let me see if I can find a good example. This one will work. So if we have an ODB source, typically, you know, everyone knows you have the, the data access mode option of table or view, which, you know, is widely used by everyone, whether you want to admit it or not. And essentially what you're doing by using just the table or view is you're just choosing a table and it's basically doing a select all out of that table. So you are pulling all the data, you know, every column you're pulling out of that table. And you could be pulling that all the way across the network. Well, one thing that's very popular and, and a lot of people actually, well, is a, a huge misconception about, uh, about filtering out columns is that a lot of developers will actually go to this columns tab. It shows you all of your columns. So say we're doing a select all, in this case, we actually are. Um, but you can actually go through, and some people will think that you can just uncheck the columns you don't need, and that's going to that's gonna resolve it. Well, actually, that's not what's happening. When you uncheck the columns here on this columns tab, what you're doing is applying a client-side filter. So you're still pulling all that data across the network, and then when it hits your workstation, it's filtering out the columns that you didn't want. So be careful of that. Instead, what you want to do is use the, uh, the SQL command and actually write out a select statement and only pull those columns that you need. So that is one of the biggest performance uh, uh, gains that you can get, or one of the biggest things you can do for your package right now is to just go and make that change. Um, there was an SSIS workshop that I was uh, co-teaching in Fort Lauderdale a year ago, and when Brian and I went over this, this point, you know, this exact point, um, we had an ETL developer in the group that VPN into her systems at, at her office because uh, she was actually filtering them out from the columns tab. You know, they, they thought that that's how you could actually stop from pulling all those columns. Uh, well, she VPNed into her, uh, her office network, um, went to find one of those packages, made the change in that select statement, and she told us later on that she took the execution time of that package from 20 minutes down to about seven. So that was a huge time saver. Now, of course, that is going to depend on how many columns you're actually filtering out. So um, execution times there will, of course, vary depending on what you're pulling.